In this video, I'm going to go over some advanced options for the Project Lead the Way Utility Shed. So we're first going to open up our Utility Shed Part 3, which ours was saved in Documents. And you want to open the one without the extension. When that opens, we're going to go ahead and save it as a new project. So file, save as, project. We want to create a new folder, right click new folder, and we'll name it Utility Shed Advanced. Open that folder and make sure you rename it with your name underscore Utility Shed Advanced. And remember the name will change at the top of your file. Throughout this video, I'm going to show you how to add interior walls, a site with grass and sidewalks, as well as some components, um, furniture and trees and things like that. So we're going to start with the interior wall. So go ahead and open up your floor plan. And adding interior walls is just like adding exterior walls. So if you click on wall, and then under properties, we want to change it from a basic wall. And we're going to pick an actual interior wall. There's a bunch of different ones you can choose from. I'm going to use the 4 and 7 eighths, but you can pick any one that you want. And then just divide your shed into two pieces. This part is up to you however you want to do it. Once you add your wall, make sure you click on modify to get out of the drawing mode. We then want to add a door. You could choose from the doors that you've already loaded, or we're going to go ahead and pick a new door and we'll go to insert, load Autodesk family. Then on the left side, we can click on doors. And there is ones that I'll say specifically exterior or interior. It really doesn't matter, but I'm going to pick one that is specifically an interior door and load it. Be careful on the size of your door. So if you pick a one foot width door, people aren't going to be able to fit through it. Typically the size of a standard interior door is between 28 and 32 inches. So between two feet, four inches and two feet, eight inches. So I'm going to pick this one that's two foot six. Click OK. Then to actually get that door, go back to architecture tab, door, the one we chose should be already loaded, and I can place that wherever I want it. When I'm done, I'll click Modify. I then want to go and look at this in 3D view. You can open it under your project browser, or you can go to View, 3D view. Now in my 3D view, I can't currently see the inside because I have my roof on it. But if I click on my roof, I can kind of see through. And one of the things I want to point out is, Right now, this interior wall is not going all the way up to my roof. So we're going to go back to our floor plan and see if we can fix it so we can our wall will go all the way up to the roof. So if I click on that interior wall and then at the top right, click attach top to base. And then go straight to your 3D view and click on the roof. And it doesn't look like it did anything, but then if I click on my roof again, I can now see that it did bring that wall up to connect to my roof. Another thing that we can do is if we wanna get a better view of the inside of our interior, I can remove my roof, but I don't wanna delete it. What I can do is hide it. So if I hover over and then right click, there's this option to hide in view, and I wanna hide the element. Element will just hide that one individual piece. If it's a category, if I had multiple roofs, it would hide all of them. Or if I click on a wall and hide the category, it'll hide all the walls. And I can flip it up. And I need to adjust my crop box to make it a little easier to see. So now I can kind of spin it around and see the interior of my shed. But then when you're done, you want to bring the roof back. 
So how you do that at the bottom, there's the light bulb and it says reveal hidden elements. If you click on that, it'll show up in pink. And then again, you kind of get your mouse so it highlights it, right click, and then you have the option to unhide in view. And again, you can choose element or category depending on what it is. And when you bring back all the elements that you need, just click on that light bulb again and it'll go back into normal view. Now we want to add a site. So under floor plans, we want to open up our site plan. And we want to add some grass and maybe a sidewalk or driveway or something like that. So up at the top, you see a section that says massing in site. Click on that tab. And we're going to first add a topo surface. To create a surface, we're going to use this place point. And I like to just create a giant rectangle. So zoom out and then however big you want your surface to be. When you place the third dot, it'll start filling in. And as you add more dots, it will adjust your, your site, but usually I just make it a big rectangle. And then go ahead and click the green check mark. Then highlight and click on your surface, and we want to change the material. So we click once and then click on the three little dots. We'll first search to see if we have what we need. So we're going to look for grass. And there's nothing found, so we're going to create our own material. So at the bottom left here, we're going to select the middle icon and create a new material. And it'll bring up a default new material. We're going to right click and rename it as grass. Right now, it's just a standard gray color. We want to add it so the material is actually grass. So again, down at the bottom, we're going to click the icon all the way to the right that's going to open our asset browser. Remember, you can adjust this if you need to be able to read some of it. And we want to select the appearance library and then do a search up at the top for grass. And it'll give you a whole variety of different grasses you can choose from. I'm going to pick the dark rye and click on the two arrows to the right. And you'll see that it'll update the appearance of it. So when you're done, you can close the asset browser. Before we click OK here, we want to go to graphics. And we want to change the shading, the color here right now. If we're in shaded, it's just going to show gray, but it would be nice if it showed it as green. So we're going to go ahead and change that to green. And then click OK. So now if I go to the rectangular prism down at the bottom and change it from hidden line to shaded, now we can see that the surface is green. We could also go to our 3D view and see that it's changed there as well. If I go back to site, let's say I wanna add a sidewalk to the front of my shed. So the door to the shed from mine is on the right hand side here. And what I want to do is I want to create a subregion. And you have to make sure you don't overlap anything. So I'm going to put make a sidewalk here and I can get as close as I want to the roof without it overlapping. Otherwise, it's going to give me an issue. And I can adjust this later. But I'm going to go ahead and draw it to so make my sidewalk nice and big. We'll make it four feet. And then let's say 16 feet in length. And this is where you have a little bit of freedom on however you wanna make yours. And it, the subregion has to be a closed geometrical figure. So it doesn't have to be a rectangle, it could be any shape, but it does have to be completely closed all the way around. Otherwise, when you go to hit the check mark, it's gonna give you an error. Um, so let me just show you that. So let's say I leave a little gap here and I try to hit the green check mark it's gonna give me some orange dots saying that it's not enclosed. So if I hit continue and I go ahead and fix that, now when I hit the green check mark, it says it's okay. 
and it's going to give me a default material. So I, I want to go ahead and change that to concrete. So I'm going to select my subregion, go to category, and I'll search up concrete. And I can choose from any of these. I'm going to use the concrete cast in place and click OK. And then if I click off, I can now see that that's gray. If I go to my 3D view, I can see that I have a sidewalk. Now, I also have this gap where the grass is. So what I can do, I can modify in my 3D view as well because I have a little bit better of a view here. So if I click on it, I can use the arrows on my keyboard to actually move the surface wherever I want. So if I want to bring it a lot closer, I can drag that in so that it goes all the way up to the building. The other thing I may want to do is right now, my floor, so if I hover and click on my floor, my floor is right at zero, which is what my grass is at as well. So if I just bring that up an inch, I then can see like now my concrete floor, I don't get that, that it looks like grass because it's trying to decide should it be concrete or grass because they're at the same elevation. Now to add a little bit more to this, we can add some trees, maybe a bench and things like that. So you could go to site components and there's some that are already preloaded. So you could choose from any of those or you can load them the same way that we have with windows and doors, except we're gonna load what's called components. So let's first just add a, maybe a couple trees. And then when I'm done, I'll click modify. So now if I want to load more components than are what, what's listed here, I can go to insert, load Autodesk family, go back to all results. And you can pick any of the categories here. So if I want to go specifically to site, I can click on that and it'll give me a bunch of different options here or if I'm looking specifically for a bench, I could even type that up here at the top. So I have a park bench and I can load that. And it'll automatically come up here for me so I can place it right next. If I wanna rotate it, I can hit the space bar and it'll rotate at 90 degrees. I can place them in the 3D view or if I click on site, it's a, sometimes easier because you can look at it from your top view and place a bench there. Plants. So maybe I want to add a couple plants. I can go to insert load out all this family. If I go back to all results, I see that there's some planting here. Um, and I can choose from some of these. So maybe I'll pick a shrub. Go to Massey Insight component, and then it'll come up with a shrub. I can move my bench. Again, either drag it or the arrows, pretty easy. And then if I go back to my 3D view, I can kind of see what I've placed. If your realistic view is working, that's really nice to look at it. Mine is being a little finicky. In addition to adding trees, bushes, benches, etc., on the outside of your building, you can do the same thing on the inside. So if I go to my floor plan and I want to add some furniture on the inside, I go to architecture and then component again, would show me what is already preloaded. So there's some a few things that you could choose from, but if I go to, I can go to insert, load out of this family and then choose or search for whatever it is that I'm looking for. So let's say I wanna look for a chair. I can just pick one. And then Remember, you can hit the space bar to rotate it and place it wherever you want it. Something that's nice is if you want to see the inside without having to go to your 3D view and hiding your roof or things like that, you can go to view, click the drop down, and use the camera. 
And then place the camera from where you want to take a picture and drag through. And it'll pop up. And you'll just have to expand your crop box to actually see however much of it that you want. So go ahead and place a couple pieces of furniture inside your shed. And the last thing that I wanted to show you that's kind of neat is if we go to our 3D view and we want to get like a really realistic view, you could go to realistic if that's working for you. If everything disappears, then don't, don't worry about that. But you can do what's called a rendering. So down at the bottom, there's this icon that looks kind of like a teapot with a light bulb next to it and it says show rendering dialogue. And what we'll do is for the quality, it's set to draft, you could leave it at draft, but it'll look a little bit better if you put it on medium. I wouldn't go higher best because it'll just take a lot longer to render. So medium will be good. And then you can change the lighting. I'm gonna leave it as sunlight only because we, don't, we didn't put in any um, artificial lighting anyway. And then, up at the top, we'll just click render and it'll take a minute or two. I like to show this because it gives you a, a realistic view of what it would look like. And if you if you do it and you like it, you can keep it and save it. How you save it is under image, you do save to project and give it a name. So we could call it like shed one exterior and then click OK. And you can close this and it'll automatically change back to whatever view you had before. But if you scroll down under your project browser, it'll show your renderings. And so if you double click, it'll open and bring that, that back. Now, before we finish, we wanna just open up our sheet and make sure everything looks good. So because we made some changes to the size of our crop box, this is no longer fitting on my sheet. So I'm gonna go back and adjust that a little bit. And it's okay if you can't see everything. And then look at it on my sheet and then I can just adjust so everything fits and looks good.